Final topic, they're banning books. Um, this is a very, uh, look, this is very sad. Amazon is what this is about first and foremost, but it's about cancel culture more generally and where it's headed. I think we've seen a lot of stories lately about all sorts of stuff from Mr. Potato Head to the Redskins to the Chicos to the withholding the Dr. Seuss books for publication, so on and so on. We're all seeing this. Some of those are Aussie examples. Wherever you are in the world, you're gonna see similar ones. I want to focus for a second on Amazon, the world's largest bookseller. They sell 53% of all books in the USA and over 80% of all ebooks and nearly all the audiobooks. They've become the latest corporate to really get into the cancel culture thing. Um, and we saw that when they joined forces with Google and Apple to try and cancel Parler, the social media app. Uh, and they did so and kicked off their server. Uh, Parler is back, but um, it's not back to its former glory just yet because they suffered a massive setback with all that cancelling from so many big companies uh, and it's difficult for them to distribute their app and all the rest of it these days. But now they're starting to ban books. And you might say, well, is it Mein Kampf? Is it the Communist Manifesto? Or is it some other title that's just as bad? The answer is, of course not. Uh, it, first of all, was Abigail Schreier's book, Irreversible Damage. They banned her from advertising it through their systems. Um, and that was a research book about the transgender phenomenon, especially in adolescent girls. As you can imagine, it challenged the gender-bending narrative. But now they've come out and completely banned a book from all of their brands and platforms. Ryan T. Anderson's When Harry Became Sally Responding to the Transgender Moment. Despite it being on sale for three years now, Amazon has suddenly said that it violates their content policy and they won't say however exactly where, how, when or why. They just say it violates the policy. bye bye. Um, now Ryan's book, it's important to note, was not a lightweight volume. I've read Ryan's book, it's brilliant. It was heavily research-based, it was compassionately argued, and it was endorsed by a who's who of top medical experts. And importantly, the book sold extremely well. Same with Abigail Schreier's. They're very popular books because they are giving a decent contribution to a debate of the moment. Um, and it's worth noting, uh, however, that it has been banned. And I just want to say this, book banning has never been a hallmark of the good guys at any point in history. Let's just get that clear. It literally never is. Uh, let's be clear about that. And this whole cancel culture thing, Dr. Seuss is a book thing, but there's others as well. Uh, there is something in this which is a rabid insecurity from those who are pushing the cancel culture line. Um, it's an underlying insecurity that woke culture has, which compels them to censor, to ban, and to cancel. And really, this is what it's ultimately about. Lies don't have to be censored. There's an alternative approach to lies. They can be exposed by analysis. Lies will always be with us. Always, whether you decide to go down the canceling route or whether you decide to go down the analysis route or a bit of column A, a bit of column B, you're always gonna have lies, but we can diminish and we can reduce them and they can be shown up as lies. But here's the problem, right? If you go down the analysis route, truth is also exposed by analysis. And that is precisely why it must be canceled by those who hate it, because there's no other way to stop it from spreading. If it is allowed out, if it's analyzed, it will be confirmed as truth. And that is the worst possible scenario for those who are trying to enforce lies. And that is really why cancel culture, or book banning, which is the old fashioned term for it, is never done in the pursuit of truth. Never. You will find that insecurity is strongest where these lies are the most fragile. And if you're being asked to believe a particularly obvious lie, you will find that the enforcement of it is rabid. I've said for a long time, the quickest way, the easiest way to get deplatformed, to get banned, to be censured on, on any platform is to speak about the transgender issue. And this present case proves that. Whether or not you speak about it graciously and carefully or not, this is the easiest way to get targeted by big tech and others. Why? Because it is the most fragile of lies. Let's be real about this. There's nothing more obvious in the world in which we live than the simple fact that it's occupied by men and women. You know which one I am simply by looking at this screen. Every person you encounter, there's a, there's a physiological reality, there's a biological reality, there's a psychological reality. We know that mums and dads are different, men and women are different. We know that we encounter people in that way, etc. It's in your face, obvious. Take the latest frontier of gender politics, the fact that men are playing biological males are playing in women's sports. I saw a picture the other day of a six foot eight biological male on a women's basketball team. You have MMA fighters fracturing women's skulls. You've got records toppling left, right, and center. 
pretty much just about everyone really, Joe Average Public, knows precisely what's going on. They can see what they see. They've got eyes in their head. And the only way to make sure that they don't act on what they see and what they know, or perchance that they don't swallow the lie whole, the only way to ensure that, the only way to ensure that that's avoided is to ruthlessly suppress the truth. Ruthlessly suppress it. And this is nasty for two reasons. The first reason is that this is totalitarian. And it's getting into various institutions which are capable, if not ex by themselves, but capable collectively of exercising totalitarian power. Uh, big tech, big corporate, media, politics. Maybe academia, maybe not, but at least the others. It's infested all of them. And the book burners with totalitarian instincts, as I said, they are not the good guys, if you catch my drift, to master the art of understatement. But here's the other reason. I want to be very clear to Christian folk that this is not a minor matter. There's a lot of conservative voices out there. There's even people who are on sort of like what you call the sensible left or whatever. Uh, there's people right across the spectrum who say, well, this is political correctness gone mad. That is to demean how serious this is. That is to simplify it far too much. That is to misunderstand its importance and its severity. Because this is the reality. This, the gender thing, along with the target of so many other revolutionary woke causes, these things target, they attack creation. In the beginning, God created the male and female in his image, right? Genesis 1.27 says that very, very clearly. It's an attack on that reality. Or, you know, marriage is oppressive and patriarchal and gender roles are this, that and the other. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, family and childbearing is, is a penalty and oppressive. They just attack and attack and attack on all those things that are in Genesis 1. Genesis 2, God's good things, God's good order, God's good design. And an attack on creation is an attack on the creator. Romans 1 teaches us that. Why? Because we're putting ourselves in his throne, in his seat, and we're rewriting his rule book and saying, you know what? We reckon we can do better. We reckon God's standards on all of this that are revealed in the very created world, we think we can rewrite the rules and get away with it. And Romans 1 tells us we don't get away with it. We don't. It says there that we bear in ourselves the due penalty for our error. In other words, we carry consequences from living this way. And the transgender thing is wreaking destruction on lives of a level that is prof so profound Time fails me to tell you of how serious it is in the lives of children who go on to these puberty blockers, and that's pretty much a sentence, to lifelong changes. Many of them will regret it. Uh, it's the same with um, the, the interruption of, you know, the destru destruction of family, the destruction of marriage, um, the, uh, the, the, the denormalizing of uh, heterosexual relationships. All of these things carry pretty serious consequences. We're wealthy enough these days and uh, to 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 and we've got enough technology to mask some of the consequences. The Romans one says you won't get away with it in your person. You just won't. There's guilt. There's all sorts of things that go crazy. So this is the most personally destructive avenue a society can go down. But also that it, it tells us in Romans one something very important and sober. It is against this tendency to rewrite the creation rules that God's wrath is revealed on a society. And it says, you know, when people want this and when people double down on this, what does he do? His wrath is revealed in this. He gives them over to it. In other words, he says, all right, have it. If that's what you want, have it. If you want to rebel to that extent, if you want to say that I'm not real and the things I've revealed in nature itself that are in front of your eyes are not real and you want to be gods, then have it. And the consequences will flow. It's a very sober, it's a very serious moment for any culture to reach. And it's why very few cultures survive this kind of thing. Um, and well, actually, I don't think any culture ever has, to be honest. But anyway, uh, that's probably a whole history thing in itself. So let us not underestimate the severity of this issue. And the importance is that we do not succumb to cancel culture. And the importance is that we don't allow it to be relegated to a fringe issue, the things that are being cancelled, which tend to relate to sexuality, gender, and so forth. But that we continue to tell the truth on these things because the world needs it. I'll never forget having dinner with a group of um, ex-LGBT people. And they sat around and they told me, please don't stop telling the truth on this because there's people like us out there who need to hear it. Uh, and they were once LGBT, they're converted to Christ, they're Christian folk, no longer identify as LGBT, whether they were trans or whether they were gay. Uh, and they sat there and looked me in the eye and said, don't stop teaching the truth. It matters. The consequences are too grave. So let that be an encouragement for us all not to stop, but also to understand that the nature of what's going on is not just madness. Uh, it's, well, to use an old-fashioned word, it's evil. I'm Mark Niles. 
And that was the truth of it. Hey, thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, then make sure to hit the like button. If you want to never miss another video again, make sure to subscribe, or you can right now watch more videos right here. Cheers.